we have got a very strong leaders, leadership. Our leaders make sure they keep their records very well. We do a follow-up. We know whether there are those who are cheating or not. And then we get to know if you were in the office yesterday and we assisted you. Can you give that chance to the other widow who has come today? So we do keep very good records and we are able to do a follow-up. Dan, you're one of the people, few Kenyans, who've intensively interacted with them. Uh, with the widows and orphans. What is their greatest challenge? What do they go for? What is their life experience like, you know, to be uh, a widow or an orphan? What I can tell you is that having a, uh, that experience, because I've dealt with widows, uh, they have got so many challenges, but the greatest one is that they are isolated because they don't have husbands. Uh, one case that really made me very angry was a case whereby a widow goes to a certain microfinance to ask for money for a loan which she's going to pay and she was not given because she didn't have a co-guarantor. They insisted a co-guarantor should be a husband. Whereas another widow in the organization had volunteered to guarantee her. Mm -hmm. It really touched myself, my, my heart. And I said, in fact, within ourselves, we are soon going to come up with our own microfinance where we are going to be lending to each other because if they need co guarantors and they should be husbands, where are we going to get husbands from? And we cannot, mm -hmm. uh, we cannot raise the debt. And uh, you are quoted in the August uh, magazine of the parents, that is 2014, actually on this column of celebrating our heroes. And you are saying that the government should create a ministry that's specifically obligated to handle the plight of widows and orphans. Tell us about that thought. That thought came to me because uh, everybody else uh, is accessing any help from other ministries in the government. But you find that widows are discriminated. Uh, there is money that has been given to, like, Maendeleo ya Wanawake. And that money, very few widows can access it. Very few, I think like less than 1% of widows in Kenya. And you know we have got a very big number of widows in Kenya. We have like 10 million widows in Kenya. So if less than 1% can access that money, then we need our own ministry. Because we have been there. You know, we are the victims. We have been pouring to each other. We have got a program in, in our organization that we call Victims Pour Pouring Out to Victims. So we have been pouring to each other and we've come to know the challenges that we are facing. So if such a ministry is created and that ministry is led by somebody who has been there, who knows the challenges, then uh, the challenges are going to be very few because we are going to rise up again as widows. Widows are very, some of them are very talented. I don't know if you have any mentorship programs and how do they raise their talents and use it as a source of income. We have been raising their talents and uh, we came to realize there are those who are very good in beadwork. And in our, in, in, in our organization, we have, we have registered Come Together Investment. Come Together Investment et Enterprise is dealing with beadwork. We are making sandals, we are making the Maasai shirts, we are making the jewelries, and we are now sourcing for markets. What drives you, by the way? Because this is just a big vision I can see you haven't. There must be something that is driving you and uh, someone you're looking or someone you're looking up to as a model. When we were starting it, I, I was not looking up to somebody. But this year, uh, our first lady managed to run for Beyond Zero campaign. And she managed it and it is working. So I, I was really following up on what she was doing. And I told myself, if the first lady managed to do it, will I, uh, I can also be able to do something with the widows. And I will touch lives not only in Kenya. My vision now went worldwide because being widowed is not only in Kenya. We are, uh, widows are everywhere. So I know I'm going to do it. And with the help of God, I'm, uh, I'm going to, to, make, to bring a great change. Dana, you are dealing with about 2,000 widows, about 2,000 orphans. Yourself, you are a widow. You have two special orphans. What are the challenges that you go through? I go through a lot of challenges. One are the financial challenges because every widow comes to you, every orphan who comes to you, every problem that they bring to you, 
mostly it's financial problems. I go ask for funds from everywhere. I, I, I sleep very late. I wake up very early in the morning. I don't have to be out of reach. I'm supposed to be to be reachable every time because they keep on calling. So I have two phones. When this one goes off, I have to change my line to the other phone. Mm -hmm. And I receive calls even during odd hours of the night. And I have to receive uh, the calls. Those are some of the challenges. So you know, offer things like legal support in such cases? Yeah. In okay. fact, we are working on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are working on the legal support. But within Ruaraka, I can say that our, our OCS has been very supportive. I went shared with him and he has been supporting the widows, especially when they are legal matters. Mm -hmm. We have a lawyer now. How is the response, the society, are they really giving uh, towards this noble cause? Yes, the response is so good. The society is very much supportive because I think once they see the cause is noble, you don't have to go back. Tell them that we have an event, we have a charity event on this day, then they, what they just tell me is, remind us, and they give out. And after they give out, we keep good records, we take photos, and they are happy because they see whatever they have given out, you've not hidden it. Mm -hmm. You've already given it to the needy mm -hmm. orphans and the widows. What is your vision, Dana? What, where do you see this organization in the next 10 years or so? I see it internationally. I see myself hosting a very big meeting uh, in Uhuru Park because I know this number, mm -hmm. I can only hold it in a very public place like Uhuru Park. Maybe there's a widow watching or an orphan or someone who would love to support you. How can they reach you? Uh, I can give them my telephone number and my email address. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are still working out on a pay bill number for the organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You give us that. As you talk to that widow who feels disparate and like the life is coming to an end, can you just look into that camera and talk to her, talk to that orphan and also let them have your contact so they can be able to reach you. I will tell that widow and that orphan, the last thing that you're supposed to do in life is to lose hope. Never lose hope in life and talk to me, we will share. I've come to learn it works out when victims pour out to victims. So you can reach me on 0724 578 034. 0724 578 034. Email address diana.commande2013 at gmail.com. diana.commande2013 at gmail.com. Or you can write to come together dot twenty thirteen widows at gmail dot com. Come together twenty thirteen dot widows at gmail dot com. Thank you very much, Diana. You are doing a great job. Continue doing what you are doing because that's what touches the heart of God. Yes, viewers, that brings us to the end of the show today. Would you like to partner with Diana? You've got her contacts. And also, if you would love to share your story with us, get in touch with us, our numbers are on your screen. Also, follow us on the Twitter handles at Revival TV Kenya or at David underscore Adede. Until next time, God bless.